Hey kids, it's Michelle Visage. Welcome to another episode of What You Packin'. And today, from the mean streets of New York City, we have the one and only Miss Candy Muse. Hey, Candy. Hi. How are you with your French beret and your thick ass eyebrows looking so cute? <laughs> I'm good, you know, I'm feeling amazing. I really am. Are you? You should be. So let's talk about Candy for a minute. Formerly the House of Aja. Mm -hmm. Now part of the dollhouse. Correct. How has your ride been and how happy for you or jealous is your sister Dahlia of you? <laughs> the ride this season was amazing. I mean, I think I can speak for myself when I say I have had the most tumultuous, I don't even know if that's a word, but it was like an up down situation where I have to fight the entire time really hard to prove why they need to be in the competition and to be able to make it all the way up to the top four. Right. My drag family was really supportive because it's the first time, you know, Aja didn't do it on season nine and Dahlia definitely didn't do it on season 12. So it was the first time right. that one of our girls made it this far in the competition. Oh yeah, and I'm sure they're super proud of you, but anybody that has done it and then they watch somebody that they know go further, it's like, damn it! <laughs> and by the way, the word is tumultuous, so you were really close, Candy. So I'll let you have that one. Tumultuous, I said tr tumultuous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you lip synced three times, mm -hmm. and you were part of the double save. With Simone, yeah, that was insane because I think it was the first time in Drag Race history where a girl fully hears like sashay away on the main stage. And once I heard that, I kind of in my mind, like I came to my senses like, okay, like, I'm going home, like my ride ends here. And you know, after I said my goodbyes, and I'm about to walk off stage to go see my other girls, and you know, once RuPaul calls my name and tells me that she doesn't want to see me go, that's like, I still think about that till this day. It's insane. It's a big deal, you'll think about that for a while. I want to go back to life in a Mormon family <laughs> to where you are now, because without to get too deep, there's a lot of issues within these very strict religious families about being gay. So how was that for you growing up Mormon and then ending up on RuPaul's Drag Race? Well, I was born into a Mormon family and I was right. baptized at eight years old in the Dominican Republic. And that's kind of everything that I knew growing up. It wasn't until like the age of like 19 where I started working at Starbucks and I wasn't able to go to, <laughs> to church because I had a Sunday shift. Right. The world kind of opened up for me. And my mother's actually a lesbian. So once I kind of got to be like in that household and you kind of see like, oh, this is what the rest of the world looks like. So is there a big Mormon population in the Dominican Republic that I didn't know about? Because I assumed everybody was Catholic. Some in the Dominican Republic because they have different branches. And in order for you to have a different branch within the church, you need to have a large community. And there are more than one Mormon church in the Dominican Republic. Wow, so it's bigger than we knew. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, how old was your mother when she came out? Right after she had me. And I guess she was like, mm -mm, this ain't for me, honey. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. And I think for you, that was part of the magic, having a gay mother and being able to be raised by her and seeing the good side of gay life where it wasn't being condemned. Being a gay Dominican in New York City, I can't imagine any place better for you to be raised look where you are now. It made growing up for me much easier. A lot of people in our community don't have a loving family that supports them, and it's why I'm so free and so loud and so lovable with everyone. Did you just say you're lovable with everyone? Well, most people. <laughs> Let's talk about Elliot with two T's. Ah! <laughs> I don't dislike Elliot. In New York City, when you see bullshit, you call it out. If I'm bringing something up to you and I'm like, hey girl, like, this is the issue that I have with you. And then you continue doing it again and again and again. I'm like, Miss Sting, let's get it together. My sis is gorge, but she was rubbing a lot of the girls the wrong way throughout filming, so. You got your first win kind of late in the show. Were you putting pressure on yourself to get that win? And when you got it, what was that feeling for you, finally? I was like, I know we're getting close to the end and I still don't have a win. At some point, I need to have a win. And the one challenge going into Drag Race, I said that I did not want to do was a roast. And then <laughs> once we got to the roast, I was like, okay, there's only six of us here. So that means there's only a few amount of challenges left. I was like, I need to win this one. And when me and Rose won the mini challenge and were able to pick the order for the roast, I was like, oh, bitch, I have to open. A lot of the girls were giving me shit the season, but I still thought I was the first competitor without any wins. My win in my head was when RuPaul saved me. I was like, yeah, I didn't win a challenge, bitch, but that's why. Because I won the biggest challenge, that was RuPaul saving my ass. 
<laughs> That's true. Why did you not want to do the roast? What was it? I've done a roast in New York City and it was awful. I fully bombed and it was just like cricket bitch in the audience. I sat <laughs> down in my hotel the night before the roast and wrote all those jokes and it just worked out. And um, you know, I want five thousand dollars. Yes, honey. <laughs> You're just funny being you. Just be you. You know, we've got very few things in this world that we can bank on. So we got to bank on us and market what we know how to market. This was very much your lane. And I think you found your groove. Who cares how late it happened? At the end of the day. It happened. And it was amazing. You grew a lot, even your looks. From the first week, I was like, oof, this girl is rough. <laughs> to where you kind of grew. I'm being straight up to where you grew in the competition. Like those are the moments that I love the most about judging on RuPaul's Drag Race. The moments of seeing somebody really get into their flow, kick it into high gear and do things that you didn't know you could do, thought you wanted to do. And not only do you do it, you do it amazingly well. So you should be really proud of yourself. There are times where I felt like, oh, am I not good enough? Like, what am I not doing? Like, the judges don't get it. And then I think it was like halfway through where I like sat down with, I think it was Mick. And I was just like, what is it that the judges are not seeing? Being from New York City and the Bronx and Brooklyn, this what it is, and this what you're gonna get. And on the main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race, baby, if it's not perfect, don't bring it on the stage. And I felt myself going through the competition. And every single critique that I got from you or from Ru, I really took in. And by the time it was the end of the competition, I felt like such a completely different person than I was when I first walked into the workroom. And you know what, Candy? We saw that. It all comes together, and here you are as a top four finalist. Let's talk about the look that you have here to your right and what it means to you. I didn't bring this for the finale. And the fact that I ended up wearing it, like I look at it now, I'm like, oh, this is so me. Everyone knows I'm just loud, bitchy bitch, and I like to have a good time. I don't do gowns. Baby, I'm not a gown kind of girl. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to be the best me and really represent who I was at the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race, it was coming out in something that streams me. Sexy, and sheer, the little nipples were out. It's colorful, it's bright in your face. And I walked out on that stage and I felt gorgeous. The hair was gorgeous. And I noticed you wore like the little Gottmik sparkly nipple things, didn't you? Me and Gottmik were best friends throughout the entire competition. So anytime I needed anything, I would go to Gottmik station. I'd be like, Gottmik, I need some little crystal nipple pasties. And <laughs> Mick was just there to give them to me always. So Candy, if you had to redo one look from this season, which one would you want to redo? It would have to be the top five, the pockets look. I remember putting it on that day and I turned to each girl in the middle workroom and I said, is it cute? And other girls were just like, mm-hmm, it looks amazing. <laughs> I would never forget turning the corner on the main stage and walking down and the blank stares that you, Rue, I knew, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get red. So when it came down to the judging and I got red, I was like, you know what? I will sell you butter if I had to, but I could not sell that dress. The dress will haunt me for the rest of my life. So if I have to redo one look, it would be that one. I was always wondering if you guys could feel the heat from us, whether we're loving it or not. Could you feel that? There were times like when I walked out for the beach runway and I could just tell you all of it, I knew I was like, oh, they live. When I walked out in that pocket look, I could just tell, I walked backstage and I was just like, oh, oh no, baby. They, they're not. <laughs> the face says it all. <laughs> Doesn't matter because you're still here. And now you are top four. How yes! does that feel, Candy Muse? It is crazy because people don't know how hard Drag Race is. Oh, yeah. Any girl auditioning in the future, like, it is hard. Please prepare yourself. It just feels so rewarding and fulfilling to be at the top four. But I know that I busted my ass and I worked hard to get there. That lip sync when it was between me and Olivia, I was like, bitch. You think I'm gonna get here and not order over to the top four? Absolutely not. Right. So now being here and having a chance to maybe fight for the crown feels out of this world because I've been such a fan of Dragish for so long. Well, you should be really proud of yourself. I am so proud of you. Like I said, I keep it real too, being a New Yorker. In the beginning, I was like, mm, she's gonna go. <laughs> and you just shut us all up. And that's my most favorite thing. And it's not that I personally don't believe in you. It's that you're not showing me what I need to see and getting me in the game. I'm so excited for you, Candy Muse. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, girl, I'm gonna need it. Those are some fierce ass competitors. So here we go. Yeah, but you did it this far, so that is one thing to be proud of. And wherever the chips may fall, they fall, but you've done it, and this Absolutely. is a big accomplishment in life. So congratulations, and I will Thank see you, you at the final, my darling. Bye, my love. Thank you, Candy Muse.
Thank you all for joining me for another episode of What You Pack In. I will see you next time. Subscribe to the Drag Race YouTube channel for all things Drag Race.